Who is this? Even the wind and the wave obeyed him. Hmm. Hi, everyone. Hmm. I wonder if you can just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, how are you? I give you a few minutes to do that. Introduce yourself. Ask the person, how are you doing? Honestly. And if the person say, hmm, I'm not too good, just tell the person, that's good. You are in the right place. We will pray for you. Amen. Well done, guys. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us and caring for us. We also thank you, Jesus, because we know we are serving a great God, a loving God, a caring Father, and a God that even the storms and the fears of life obey him. Lord, we also want to thank you because you are in our boats. Father, you are paddling those water for us. So help us, Lord Jesus, to know you more and to offer our boats to you. Amen. This morning, I wonder what kind of booth, boat sorry, you are in. The, the Bible, the passage where Anne-Marie read to us said that Jesus was sleeping in the boat. And what was happening? There was storm. The passage that was beautifully read also says that when the storm began, Jesus was in the stern, asleep, because even Jesus is human like us. He had a body like you and me. He feels hungry like you and me, thirst, suffer pain like you and me. And no wonder he is tired and he needs to sleep. It was also said that Jesus had been preaching in open air all day long. And he needed to sleep when the evening came. So, this shows that Jesus actually rested. And it also proves that rest is essential. And we should make time and also make it a priority to rest whenever we need to. The Bible says in the book of Genesis that on the seventh day, what happened? God, God bless you. You know your Bible very well. So, rest is essential for health. And it is essential to keep our brains going. This proves to us that Jesus is as much man and he is God. He understands us and knows the difficulties we face, the tiredness, the aches and pains, and sufferings we experience as human beings. And he is touched by our feeling. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Hebrew 4, verse 15, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things and yet without sin. So what it simply means is Jesus is touched with everything you are going through. And he knows exactly how you feel. When things are going great in our lives, it's so easy to say, God is good. <laughs> but indeed, is God good every time? And if we are honest with ourselves, when going through challenges, can we say, 
God is good. I'll be honest. At times, I don't say God is good. In Mark 4, 35 to 41, we come to a familiar story that pushes us to ask an important question. Who do we believe God to be in the time of storm? And secondly, how does our understanding of God impact the way we respond during the season of difficulties? While we can affirm and proclaim a high view of God and of his power when things are good, at the same time, we may be tempted to feel our situations and respond with worries and fears when we are faced with life's storm. Some of us, like the disciples, may say, don't you care that we drown? Or perhaps our usual slogan, God, where are you? Where are you? Are you still sleeping in my boat? One thing I do know is that no one wishes for hard time to come in life, but it strikes. No one asks for suffering or the storm to face them. No one wades through deep rivers or hurt, rejection, and pain, or to try and find out what darkness and confusion means. They are real and they exist, and these are all part of life. Yet, this is what shapes us, this is what shapes our faith, and this is what flexed our spiritual muscle when the time of storm comes. This is what gives you a testimony. This is what gives you an assurance that indeed God is in your boat. When he allows you to paddle the water. When he says, keep going I am with you, yet you couldn't see it or feel it. The story of Jesus coming the storm is the point of revelation of Jesus as God and that he can be trusted and that he has power over nature and our lives. He can be trusted at all times, even during the storm. He even can calm the natural storm. I trust me, he will calm the spiritual storm of our lives. Like the disciples, we must consider whether we will respond to the situation of our lives with faith in Christ Jesus or with fear. So your decision is left to you. And which one will you choose? In this case, we see his disciples choosing a great lack of faith and showing great fear amidst the storm. They have forgotten all the miracles Jesus did in the recent days. They cannot see past their present trouble and they panic. And that is what most of us often do. It is fine to be fearful, but it is not advisable to live in fear. Because fear cripples. 
and destroys our faith in God. Yet, God wants us to exercise faith in all things by trusting in his unfailing love and grace. That he will sustain us even in the time of storm and challenges in our lives. The enemy of our fear, the enemy of our heart is fear. The enemies of our thought is also fear. Because it reminds us of the absence of our safety and comfort in God. Fear is our minds reacting to a perceived threat, and it comes in all shapes and sizes or even forms, and this affects people differently. The way it affects me differs from the way it affects you. But one thing I do know is it doesn't have a possible, positive effect on no one. God's will is for us to choose faith over fear by relying on his promises and his word in all situations. Choosing faith over fear is knowing which one we are operating in. It is not saying, <laughs> it is not saying that you believe some, uh, some things that, um, some things that you are not actually acting on, no. Choosing faith over fear is, is not making decisions without any doubts or concerns of our circumstances that I will call foolishness or carelessness rather than what is having faith over fear. Having faith over fear involves considering the situation, weighing the options, and understanding the danger, but then making the choice to fight through the fears of your life and trusting God in them. So, indeed we know that we are living a life full of fear. Fear of what will we eat? Fear of how will I survive? Fear of God, where are you? This boat is sinking me. This trouble is more than I can bear. But trust me, the grace of God is sufficient. All God wants you to do is to rely upon his word, trusting in his word, and believing that all things will come through for you. Yes, it's hard to do that at times. Because we don't know when the storm will end. And trust me, some may even die in the storm. Because it's either their faith is small, or that is how it is. That is life at times. But... Through it all, God is still glorified. Some times ago, I told you about one of my patients in the hospital who I went to visit, and she, was, she, she died of cancer, actually. But while praying for her, her faith was more than myself. When praying for her, she was saying, I know where I'm going. While praying for her, she said, I have hope that I will see my God. Faith is pushing our fear to the side and replacing the fear with, faith, with, with grace and love of God. Often, this may involve an action like Peter, when P 
Peter has God, can I come and walk on the sea with you? Jesus said, come. So at times, faith takes physical action. And at times, faith is simple. It's simply a mental state of inward decision to replace our anxieties with peace by praying and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. This is seen in Philippians 4, 5 to 7. God did not give us the spirit to fear. That is what the book of 2 Timothy 1, 7 says. But the power of love and self-control, which is very, very important. And all this we cannot achieve by ourselves, but by immersing ourselves in the word of God. Looking back at all he has done for you and how he has built you and how he has brought you out of tough difficulties in the past, that same God will do it again. I wonder as you are sitting down, I wonder what fear is within you. I wonder the anxieties within you. I wonder the trauma within you. When we were worshiping this morning and Sarah and the worship team were singing Jesus, over my families, Jesus, over my fear. Within me, I feel as if Jesus wants to speak into our hearts. Jesus wants to speak into our situation. Jesus wants to lighten the weight that some of us are carrying. And he's saying, just drop it. This morning, can you just trust God to drop that load you're carrying? Because fear is a big load. It cripples one. It turns to frustration. It turns to hurting. And one thing it does is it separates you away from people who love you. But God doesn't want that for you. My father would often tell me the story of the snake that walks alone. He said when a snake walks alone, it's easy to kill that snake. But when you see 10 snakes walking together, you run away from it. That is how the spirit of God, faith is in the life of every believer. When you walk alone, you walk in fear. But when you walk along others and the word of God, you walk in faith and in victory. And this morning, God is calling us to an altar, an altar of togetherness, an altar of faith, an altar of surrender, an altar of trusting him and believing to walk with him. God wants to walk with us through all things, either small or big. He wants to walk with you. He wants to steal that storm within your heart, within your mind. Because the Bible says with God all things are possible. Psalm 23 verse 4 said, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Today as Christians, one of the ways that we can exercise our faith over our finances, 
or over our giving is trusting that God will provide. Some of us, we find it hard to give due to fear of if I give, it turns to nothing. But in the mathematics of God, when you give, you gain more. Don't ask me how, please. Because he's God. He does things in his own ways. And I often say to people that I am a living witness. When I give, I don't have billions, but God gives me what that will sustain me somehow. I don't know how. And I'm often grateful to him for that. So, what is that fear that is holding your pocket? Saying, don't release that money to God. God is in need. And we are the tools that he has placed on earth and in this church to meet that need. I pray you and I will be that tool that will surrender our finances, our life to God in Jesus' name. Lastly, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he wants us to have peace in all circumstances. The dictionary describes peace as freedom from disturbance, tranquility, also a state of period in which there is no war. This could be peace over physical war, spiritual war, or wars within our hearts and minds. The peace within Jesus gives us his peace. Jesus was sleeping in the boat, yet there was a storm. The storm did not face Jesus because he is the Prince of Peace. And that same peace is what he wants to give to you and me when we can only trust him. The passage does not promise us that Jesus will come every storm of our life. Nevertheless, he is in the boat of our lives. And the situation within us will give way as we maneuver through it. The central truth of this passage is that Jesus is God and Lord over nature. And he has power over all circumstances of our life. As we trust in him by choosing to live in faith rather than fear. Regardless of whatsoever we may be going through. My prayer this morning is that God will elevate us in faith. Even when the boat of your life seems tumbling. May you be able to trust him and hold on to his word. May you live in the love and peace of God, knowing that he has you in all circumstances. God is here this morning. And he's saying to you, please honestly hand me those fear within your heart. Hand me everything that cripples your faith. Jesus needs your boat. He needs the boat of your life. He wants to walk with you. He wants to help you channel everything within you. Will you give it to him? Will you give him your faith? I mean your fears? So he can turn them to faith. Faith still exists because God still exists. And he wants us to walk in faith. Amen.